Hey what's up guys welcome to another video in which we are going to learn about switch case in java programming and guys this is one of the alternatives to the if else code that is we can have the syntax in this way so we have the switch keyword and then followed by inside the brackets we have an expression so usually it is kind of a number which we can check the value of so guys inside the curly braces we have the case keyword followed by the value of the number that can be possibly equal to the expression that we have provided over here and then if this value 1 is equal to this expression so this block of code will get executed whatever we provide the code over here and then after that code we have the break statement in order to come out of the switch block of code in the similar way we have multiple cases over here so case value 2 and then we have the block of code and then we have the break statement and then guys another important thing if any of the case values doesn't match with the expression so the control flow will go to this default keyword and then whatever block of code is present over here it will get executed so guys let us understand this with the help of examples so what i will do is let's say we have the integer i that is defined as 1 so we are declaring a variable i and then initializing it with a value as 1 over here and we are going to have a switch keyword over here. So inside the switch keyword we are going to check the value of i. So what I will do is I will provide the expression that is i over here inside these open and close brackets and then we have curly braces and inside these curly braces as we have seen in this syntax we have the case keyword followed by the value. So over here we have the case keyword followed by the value so let's say we have the value as 0 and then we have a colon so guys this is the syntax after the case keyword we have a value and then we have a colon over here and then we can have the code over here so the code can be in this way we can have any block of code so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to print the value of i over here in the print statement so i will get printed over here when it is 0 guys let us include a string over here as well in the print statement so what i will do is value of i is and then we have a plus sign and then we have the i variable and then after this we have the break keyword followed by a semicolon and then in this way this is the first case statement similarly we can have the multiple case statements as well so i'll just copy this and paste this over here and instead of zero what we will have is we will have one so guys notice over here one thing that we already defined case zero so again we are defining case zero over here so if we hover over this red line the compiler will tell us that this is a duplicate case so guys this is one of the important features of eclipse that it provides us the compiler errors as well so we will change the case value to one in this case and value of i is one will get printed and then guys let's say if it is not equal to zero nor it is equal to one then we can have the default value over here so we can have the default case and not the value so we have the default case over here and then we can just print this statement so i'll just copy this and paste this over here so are we supposed to provide a break statement after this default statement it is not provided in the syntax currently so we will check without providing the break statement in the default keyword over here so the value of i if it is not equal to 0 nor it is equal to 1 so i's value will be something else and that will get printed over here and guys what we will do is let me just save this file and try running this code so as you can see value of i is 1 so currently what is happening is we are passing the i's value to the switch case and then inside of this case is i's value 0 no in this case so the control flow will go to the next statement that is case 1 so is i's value 1 in this case yes it is so it will just print the value of i it is equal to 1 guys in order to make it more easy to understand i'll just remove this i value over here since it is always going to print either 0 or 1 in this case so what we will do is i will just provide the string as 0 over here so that we exactly come to know that yes this print statement is getting printed over here and over here what we will do is we will put the value as 1 so the string is 1 and over here we will put value of i is something else apart from 0 or 1 so guys let me just save this file and try running this code so as we can see 1 is getting printed so this block of code is getting printed and after the break statement it comes out of the switch case guys let us see what happens if this break statement is not provided so let me just remove this break statement and let me just save this file and try running this code 
So as we can see, one is getting printed over here, but the control flow did not encounter the break keyword. So what is happening is the control flow is also going to this default statement. And then this line is getting printed. As you can see, value of I is one. So guys, it is very important that we provide the break statement whenever we are dealing with our actual requirements in Java programming. So we have provided the break statement. Now guys, what I will do is I will change the value of I to zero now. So let me just save this file and try running this code. So zero is getting printed, which means that the control flow was successfully able to encounter this case that is zero and then this print statement got executed. What if we remove the break keyword over here Let me just remove this and save this file and try running this code. So as we can see zero is getting printed and then again control flow goes over here because the break statement was not encountered. So one will get printed again and then break keyword got encountered. So it comes out of the switch case. So guys it is very important that you provide the break keyword. And guys, let us see another example now. Neither it is zero nor it is equal to one. So I will provide the value of i as five now in this case. So let me just save this file and try running this code. So as we can see value of i is five So zero and one. Neither of the statements got printed over here. So the control flow went to this default part and value of i is so whatever value we provided that is five got printed over here. And guys in this way we can easily use the switch case and check what is the value and based on the value of the variable we can provide the required print statement or do some arithmetic operations as well depending on your requirements. Guys in this example we have checked with the help of the integer data type and we have provided the integer data type as the expression. Can we do the same thing with the string variables as well? So practice on your own regarding the string variable and providing the string expression over here and the string cases over here and let me know in the comment section below whether we can provide the string variables with the switch expression. So guys that's it in this video. Please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well. The next video that we are going to talk about is arrays in Java programming. So stay tuned.